Hey guys, welcome to the video today. I will be making a video on this book, Astro Stories by Steve Cole, the, spa the Space Ghost. So let's open it up. We don't need to see that page. Uh, on the screen. For Jake and Oliver Greenwood. We're dinosaurs. Big, stupid, lumbering reptiles, right? All they did was eat, sleep and roar a bit, right? Died out millions of years ago, when a big meteor struck the Earth, right? Wrong. Wait, wrong. The dinosaurs weren't stupid. They may, have, they may have had small brain, but they used them well. They had big thoughts and big dreams. The dinosaurs discovered as early as the Jurassic period and were already enjoying a new life among the stars. No one has found evidence of, of, of dinosaur technology yet, but the first fossil bones were only unearthed in 1822 and new finds are being made all the time i'll be right back guys in one second all right i'm back guys all right so. all right 1822 and new finds are being made all the time the proof is out there buried in the ground and the dinosaurs live on way out in space even now They've settled down in a place they call the Jurassic Quadrant and over the last 65 million years, they've gone on evolving. The dinosaurs we will be meeting are part of a, wait, part of a group called the Dinosaur Space Service. Their job is to explore space, to go on exciting missions and to fight evil and protect the innocent. These heroic herbivores are not just dinosaurs, they are Astrosaurus. Astrosaurus. No, the following story has been translated to from Secret Dinosaur Space Service record. Earthling dinosaur names are used throughout, although some changes have been made for easy reading. There's even a guide to help you pronounce the dinosaur names at the back of the book. I've tried to find the pronunciation so I could. Uh, hopefully you guys can see that. The crew of the DSS Doro Sauropod, Captain Teg Stegosaur, Arx Orano, First Officer, Gypsy, Gypsy Sauron, Communications Officer, Iggy Tooth, Chief Engineer. Yeah, just all the planets. Okay, sometimes you guys have time to look at it. Space Ghosts. Chapter 1 The Cursed Treasure. The shuttle swooped out of the night sky like. Right. Like a metal egg falling from a nest of stars. It zoomed over the surface of a barren planet. The landscape was lit by a dozen silver moons, but the view was rotten. By the way, I'm sorry, I forgot to stop at that full stop right there. There's no sign of life, no trees, no or rivers, nothing but rocks slowly crumbling to dust. The shuttle landed and Captain Teg's stegosaur an orange brown. Stegosaurus struck out his instinctive beak. So this is a planet creepus, he said. Tegs was a captain in the dinosaur space service. He looked up at the sky where his amazing ship, the DSS Sauropod, hung like an extra tiny shiny star. It was warm and snug up, snug and safe up there. Down it was cold and creepy. The wind howled. Stone and shingle scrunched beneath his four feet. Anything could be hiding in the caves and canyons of this lovely world. 
Teg smiled to himself. It was just the sort of place for an adventure. A triceratops followed him out of the shuttle. This was Ark's, Treg's trusty first officer. Uh, not a nice place for a picnic, he noted, ducking his large frilly head as the wind blew sand in his eyes. Luckily, Camp Kentro is not far from here. I landed the shuttle as close as I could, said Iggy, scampering after him. He was a stocky Ingwadan who had been in a fight or two, and he was a brilliant engineer. It's not my fault this old camp has no landing pad. It's okay, said Tegs. The walk will do us good. I've got the tra- tracker called Gypsy Soaring. The stripy duckbill looked after the sauropods. Communications. As she stepped out to join her crewmates, the tracker on her wrist was already beeping. This will lead us straight to Camp Kentro, where Shanta and his Diplo- wait, Diplodo- Diplodocus crew will be waiting to give us a nice cup of swamp tea, said Ox. I hope they set off through the stinging wind and tags for about their mission. Shanta Dick was a famous Diplodus, Diplodocus miner. He and his team had worked in mines all across the Jurassic Quadrant. They had dug for diamonds on Diplocks. They had rummaged for rubies on racks as well, and they had come here to creep us in search of something very special indeed. But they had only found but they had found only problems. Shanta had called the DSS for help, and Admiral Rosso, the head of the DSS, had sent the seropod straight here, but so far, no one had told Tegs exactly what was wrong. All Rosso would say that it was a delicate matter. All right, I'm gonna fold this page. All right. The book you can get it from shops so you can order it anyways i hope you guys enjoyed like and subscribe and i'll see you next time goodbye